Sutton Valley Talk Time on Podcast. It's the Sutton Podcast. And there it is! Sutton United of the GM Foxhall Conference have put down first division Coventry City, winners of the FA Cup themselves less than two years ago. And what a moment to enjoy for the fans of this Surrey side. They've had their moments before, but never one like this. But the whistle goes now. You like for Sutton United, Sutton United, the National League are through to the last 16 of the FA Cup. No longer English football, perennial non-league club. A 123-year crescendo reaches a new peak for Sutton United, who are promoted to the Football League for the first time. Hello and welcome to another episode of Sutton United Talk Time on Podcast. It's the Midweek Social. Um, joining me today, we've got Dan from Candemonium. Hello, Dan. Welcome back. Evening. Thank you. And for the first time, um, who's going to get the full, almost the full, what's up, who are you, Truman, is Gabriel. Hi, Gabriel. How are you? Hello. Good evening. Fine. Thank you. Lovely. Um, so we, we kind of know Dan's backstory, but we don't know yours. I, have, I still haven't worked out the sound. Well, actually, I say I haven't worked it out, but this lot don't allow sound clips. So it's not actually me. I've been trying for like months and now I found out they don't do it. Um, so that's brilliant. Uh, but tell us a bit about yourself. Um, essentially, who are you, Gabriel? How come to you support Sutton and whatnot? So um, I, I first got to see Sutton on Eurosport in uh, the football game uh, for uh, FA Cup in against uh, Leeds, mm-hmm. um, I I'm a big fan of the FA Cup because it allows small teams to to have great results and to achieve. Uh, I don't know. It's a dream for them even to play against teams like Arsenal or Liverpool or Chelsea. And um, I watched the game and I was very happy that uh, Sutton won. I do recall um, from that team. Nick Bailey, which I googled, and he had uh, over 200 games in the championship or around there. Yeah, yeah, and I do recall uh, Jamie Collins, Collins, which uh, shirt I do wear. I, I bought <laughs> it. Yeah, because he scored that goal, and also because he was a little bit chubby, maybe. <laughs> He's not Just here. He's not here. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this Jamie is Collins much to a T broke me then. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and so that's obviously what you're on Eurosport, but you, you're, you're here now. So um, I moved to UK in July 2020, mm-hmm. and um, we are targeting initially the north of uh, London, mm-hmm. but uh, we've seen some properties there, and the prices were really sky high and crazy. And uh, when you Google search uh, Sutton, it's famous before being famous for the, the football team, it's famous for the schools. And I do yes. have two small kids. And uh, this was our priority to get a good education. I think this is the main main argument for moving here, mm-hmm. to get a good education for the kids. And uh, we've seen a place in Sutton and it was immediately after we've seen some uh, places in St. Albans and the shop was wow. <laughs> like, here the prices are better the property is better so we were and uh, on the way here actually i passed by the the sign with the stadium and for me that was another incentive <laughs> you know <laughs> and uh, uh, before that we have visited between 2007 and 2020 we have visited london a couple of times and it, i remember that each time i was searching the football games but uh, we were staying in central London as tourists and it looked very, very far away. I didn't know London at the time and it looked, uh, you know, uh, tube plus uh, train plus bus. It looked a very long trip yeah. to get here. But yeah. I remember I searched and I wanted to come here even before. So, so where, where is home? So, sorry? Where, where's home? Where's, where, where, where did you come from? Uh, Romania, Bucharest. Mm-hmm. Romania, lovely. Um, so you you came here just you said July twenty, because yeah. then everything was shut. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that was quite an adventure to get here. We we planned that uh, in January, February, 
but uh, then all the COVID thing happened. The borders were shut for a long time. And then uh, when the border opened, we took just a suitcase because we didn't know how we can arrive here. Uh, we went to, to Austria for a couple of days and we were supposed to have a flight to London. And that flight got cancelled. And then we waited for two more weeks and we were uh, having another uh, uh, flight from Vienna to London. And that uh, flight was cancelled like six hours before the flying. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. finally, the next day, we got a flight to Paris and we managed to get here. Perfect. So, so obviously, you, you, when you got a chance to come to watch us, did you straight away go, that's it? Or did you? Did you, did you um, try before you buy, if you like? <laughs> you, you remember that period. Um, mm -hmm. They were playing, uh, they, uh, preparing for the season, and uh, mm -hmm. I think they were playing the um, friendly games with an audience. Mm -hmm. And uh, I waited because you didn't know. It was a very unclear period. Yes. But yeah. I waited, I think, uh, until the last week before the championship to start. And I bought a season ticket because they said oh, wow. that the people will be allowed at the games. So I yeah. said, okay, let's go for it. But within a couple of days, they just announced no, no spectators. Yeah. So uh, I received from the club uh, always a code to watch the live stream. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't, actually. For the first three <laughs> games, I didn't. And when I opened the TV, it was the game against Knots, which was pretty boring and with a very bad ending. And then the next time I opened it, it was the game against Dagenham, which was, they were one nil and one man up and they still didn't win. They were, it was a draw. And then the next game was the game against Wrexham, which was oh. another disaster. <laughs> so at the second point, I said, I shouldn't look. Because when I don't look, they're winning. And when I look, they're losing. <laughs> so, and this worked also in, uh, in uh, spring, in April, when they had uh, that uh, very bad streak for the month of April. I think they only won a game and uh, they only scored once or something like that in six games, if you remember. Right. So with all that, <laughs> you've watched all the games that lose. You couldn't... You, you look all 10 to you lost your money and um, you still came back <laughs> what, what what made you keep trying um because i don't think i would have i'm gonna be honest dan what do you reckon <laughs> yeah I, mean, I think I, even i'd have got to a point where i you know take a hint <laughs> <laughs> but they had the besides the games i watched <laughs> they're they're winning you know yeah and um Actually, you know, remember also that in December they opened uh, the yeah. for two games uh, yeah. the, the spectators uh, access, and I went. Uh, I took even my Polish neighbor to the Solihull game, which was a good result, uh, four one. And yeah. um, then um, there was in three days there was the games against the games against Chesterfield. Yeah. I think, which yeah. they lost yeah. one nil, but I didn't go because it was December, it was very cold, and I was thinking, okay, there's a lot of games to come yeah. to yeah. see. Yeah. And yeah, that was but the I last one. <laughs> that was the last one before Hartlepool. But I've been <laughs> at the promotion game. You were at the Hartlepool game, yeah. yeah. Excellent. Um, I've said a few times, and I'm, I'm not entirely sure whether it's my memory or not, but I, 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 was, I did something, and I was like, I remember the atmosphere at the Hartlepool game being really odd um, and kind of like, I did think at one point, we're on TV and everyone must be kind of watching this going, are oh, Sutton fans really about to win the league? Um, I don't know, do you guys remember? I, I remember when Louis, I, I said on that thing the other day, when Louis stuck his big leg out and scored to make it 2-0, I remember everyone just kind of seeming to relax and go, holy shit, we're just about to win this. But I, I thought it was a bit flat beforehand. I don't know if, if, if it's my memory or what do you reckon? Yeah, it wasn't that noisy. It wasn't like a this seething atmosphere on the day. I yeah. think it was. I think it was a bit of uh, yeah, a bit of shock that everyone was back in for a game, the magnitude of it, and mm -hmm. also the fact that we're only allowed a thousand in there. I yeah. mean, I, if, if it had been normal circumstances, we'd have sold that game out easy. Yeah. 
yeah, you know, you'd have been four or five thousand in there, but yeah, so yeah, it was a bit weird. Um, I do, I do remember the last 15 20 minutes was was really yeah. good, yeah, because um, I think everyone, even even us lot, actually <laughs> believed this, this yeah. might happen, yeah. so yeah, I mean, yeah, the first goal didn't help either because it was sort of the it was that goal that's the uh, the free kick the keeper pushed into the corner mm. so it wasn't quite a that sort of it hit the back of the net and everyone could celebrate it was like has that gone in mm -hmm. oh it has oh lovely yeah. but yeah once the second goal went in yeah it's, uh, it was it was much better but moving on to the end of this season you've been a few more times i take it um i've missed only three or four home games mm -hmm. at, uh, I do have a season ticket again, and I yeah. watch as many as I can. I went also to the AFL Trophy games, starting the one with uh, Wimbledon. All right, so you, you you jumped onto the Papa John's Trophy games quite yeah. early. Yeah, yeah. You wasn't someone who jumped on quite late. Yeah, no. not bandwagon no. jump along. No, so. no, no. Sorry, sorry, Dan. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, <clears throat> you were telling me um, before we came on as well that. Uh, you have been to a, a few different clubs, South London as well. Yeah, um, um, I my passion for for football dates from back from my childhood. I supported, of course, a, a team in Romania for a long time, but uh, Romanian football was very shaken by the events that happened after the ninety and um, practically all teams that were in the first league in. 1990 are now bankrupt okay so my club my club just disappeared in 2009 oh wow yeah and wow. uh actually I was involved in trying to to revive it with uh, mm -hmm. some other people between 2016 then until i left and it it still is a small club in in um in third league in romania which has a level you can think at Ishmian League. Okay, so what, what's the name of the club? Because it's we love, Progressul. We love obscure. Progressul. 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 In, yeah, in the years 2000, they even had some victories in the UEFA Cup. They eliminated oh. once Herenvin from Holland, mm -hmm. Partizan Belgrade, wow. Chernomorets Odessa from Ukraine. Yeah. Yeah, but as yeah. I said, they went bankrupt and. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's very hard to, as it, even Wimbledon here proves it, to to have a supporters club that goes beyond a certain level because you yeah. get to the economical uh, constraints that mm. don't allow you to to make much progress. Um, but so, you were again, sorry, telling me that you were um, you were volunteering as well. Now you you started doing the uh, turnstiles. Well, you you offered yeah, it yeah, once. Yeah. But they broke yeah. you in already for another spell, didn't they? <laughs> yeah, they were um, on the forum. I entered on the Amber forum. I know you are there too, both of yeah. you actually advertising. Yeah. Um, and uh, Dave Fairbrother was asking for volunteers for Saturday. I went, uh, I, I offered my help. And um, I think they, seeing the name and seeing that it was the first time, they uh, were afraid that I wouldn't show up, so they actually got someone else on the turnstiles, yeah. and they gave me a badge in which was written, uh, "How can I help you?" Oh, and, right, yeah. <laughs> and to stay at the front gate and uh, give people directions, which is not my best uh, choice because I'm sometimes I'm, I'm good in English, I understand English, and I. I can speak, but sometimes I'm running out of my words and I get stuck. You know. So. You, you, I, honestly, I'm, I'm not just saying this to you, but um, in my work, I deal with people who from various different countries, and I'm, I'm literally always amazed at people's English, especially when they start apologising because I'm like, yeah, okay, it's, it's, it's better than mine. Um, so your, your English is fine for for us, um, but we're going to have to talk about the game. Um, We've delayed it as long as possible. Uh, <laughs> it, it 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 wasn't the greatest spectacle. Um, tr tr try try guys to, to 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 liven this game up for us. Go on, give, give us your thoughts on the match. Um, it started well. Uh, we had twenty good minutes, not very great chances, but uh, we 
did create and we did have chances and Salford looked that they are already uh, came for for a draw and they're already trying to make time go away the better goalkeeper especially but uh, from then on it went downhill there was still the big chance of of Donovan that uh, I don't know maybe somebody can just move that post for three <laughs> centimeters because yeah. it robbed us for four points in three three days yeah 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 um and uh, the the start of the second the first half an hour of the second half was really bad really bad we for some spells they were only in our area for a few minutes yeah no i mean i i there was a couple of things obviously i was standing near you down so we, we don't have yeah. similar similar view but um first half we were like how come they're not doubling up on dave and he was mm. destroying them and then as you just said it just petered out whether we thought it was too easy and figured it was going to come um i, I don't know it just it, it seemed very odd and flat after the half hour mark yeah it was weird how it just take the game just kind of just tapered off didn't it it just yeah. first 30 minutes a bit of to and fro i think that we had by far the better chances but, i mean they they threatened but like, santi thomas up front was good for them um yeah. i mean marshall uh oh matt smith up front very well as well um Is but it, uh, apart from that, they didn't they they didn't look a great side you know they're, they're probably one of the poorest i've seen this year and it was just mm. you know we'll get one and then we will go on and beat this lot and then the the goal just it just yeah it died after half an hour and after that we just lacked i just thought we just lacked a little a little bit of spark somewhere i don't know what it was but yeah just the game the game just kind of petered out and it was only once we got tanto on at the end that we really showed any life again yeah um, I, I wanted to actually mention the matt smith thing is because Obviously, we don't know how much he's on, but he's on a fair whack. Um, I'd be furious if he was playing for us. I'd be utterly furious because he, he did nothing. Um, he he looks. Uh, I know he's been playing at Championship level for a good for most pretty much all his career now since he since he left Oldham and went to Leeds. Um, so he's a good player. I, I don't know how much he's played for Millwall. Um, can't be much if they've if they've let him go. So I don't know whether he's been injured. He he looked like he was carrying a bit bit of extra weight oh. and stuff like that. So maybe he's working his way back to 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 match fitness. I don't know, but he oh. he didn't offer much as an attacking threat. But yeah, it was um it's just oh. one of those games that you'll just go yeah no everyone everyone will, it'll get mentioned by someone in the summer and you go oh yeah yeah that. Yeah. Well, it, yeah, it's I, not one that'll live long in the memory. I had two people from my work for completely different reasons come in, were there last night, including my boss, and this was the second match she'd ever been at in her entire life. And um, when she was on the work group bemoaning it, I did have to use the phrase, that is one for the purists. Um, that's, that's not a game that's going to make someone go, you know what, I really fancy going back again. Um, I mean, we didn't help ourselves. We were launching the long balls up to Donovan for some reason to win in the air. Um, yeah. But maybe I'll be expecting too much. Have we been spoiled a little bit? Yeah, you kind of got to just sort of sit back and just look at it in the big context. It's another point. It's a clean sheet. We didn't, you know, we didn't lose at home. We're still fourth, um, which is ridiculous for us, as we keep saying. So, yeah, I, I, it's, it, I think it is a, a little bit of a missed opportunity to nick, to pick up sort of yeah. three points, get get beyond that 50-point marker and that we've all been talking about and just start kicking on. And it's yeah. we've been talking about that 50 points for so long and we're just now I, crawling up to it. I, I have to say it's, a little it's bit. It's starting of, to become a bit of a millstone, I think. Just get Let's get beyond 50 like, and let's see what happens after that. A little bit, I was like, Oh, do you know what? At least we haven't got the 50, at least I've still got something to talk about. <laughs> Banging on about 50 points. Um, and there were a couple of injuries, which um, I don't know if we've heard anything since. I don't, uh, Matt, I've not no, seen it. Yeah, so obviously, you've got Craig and Louis was, was bad, and then he seemed to get the adrenaline kicking and he, he, he managed to see out the game. But obviously, we don't know what's going to be like when he's waking up this morning. Mm. Um, 
But before we move on to the warrants about Saturday, and a quick chat about Saturday, um, can I have a couple of nominations for your player of the day, James? Uh, for uh, Tuesday, yeah? For Tuesday, yeah. Oof, this is hard. Um, <laughs> nobody... It doesn't have to be, just to clarify, it doesn't have to be your man of the match. It can be a player that you think deserves a mention. Just, just going to put that out. You don't actually have to be man of the match. To be anyway. Um... The central defenders, uh, Ben Ben and uh, Louis John, they are always yeah. faultless. And um, as the guy that I criticized, Ben Wyatt, because the first time I seen Ben Wyatt, it was in the lo uh, loss against Notts. And I recall him passing to Buzanis yeah. and then the, the ball was lost. And um, at the beginning of the season, I didn't look at Ben Wyatt as a... I, I thought he's beyond his level. But he had a, a few good, very good games lately. He progressed a lot, I think. Yeah. Thanks, Dad. Do you think? Um, yeah, I thought Ben did well when he came on. Uh, I thought John Barden actually played quite well in midfield. I thought mm -hmm. he's... <clears throat> the last couple, last couple of times he's played in the middle, um, he's had to fill in there. He's kind of... I guess it's because he's been playing at fullback for so long and it's just taken him a little bit, of, maybe a little while to get his eye back in. But I thought... Last night he was he was solid. He he was one of the few sort of consistent performers over the ninety minutes. I thought. Okay. Um, apart from that, yeah, I'd agree with the two centre backs as well. They're both both solid. Dealt with Matt Matt Smith very well. So. Okay. Well, on my list, I had I had um, John Barden and Louis, and only because of his half hour I'd Dave as well. So. Um, mm. I thought I thought he did really well. He, there were a couple of chances where he, he, I think he shot and he could have just squared it and possibly could have got that own goal. Um, but I'll stick all four of those out and we'll see what people think. Um, people didn't seem overly impressed when I put Ben uh, put Dean on the list last week, but he did make some good saves. I know he gave away a penalty, but... <laughs> but yeah, he didn't Life of a goalkeeper. Much. Yeah, absolutely. But we mentioned some injuries. We mentioned the, the, the long unbeaten run, um, still unbeaten in 2022 as are Forest Green. And joining us now to help us talk about that is a couple of chaps from the pod on the hill, pod on the top of the hill, sorry. Um, it's Ollie and Laurie, but I think you're sitting the wrong way round. <laughs> I think we are, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you've got to do this, you've got to copy out and deck. Come on, guys. Got yeah, same, yeah. yeah, got to be the same size always. <laughs> um, how are you, chaps? Yeah, very well, thank you. How are you? Very well, thank you. Um, so your Forest Green supports, you, you've got your podcast, not the American one, the other one. Yeah, the other <laughs> one. <laughs> so how's the life of a Forest Green supporter this, this season? Oh, uh, you know, the best season as a Forest Green supporter, for, for me personally, I think uh, in the past, with 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 Mark Cooper, recent times we we've had some you know turns slightly sour. And we may have dropped off in in terms of results and, and league position. <clears throat> Whereas this scene has it's been amazing so far. We we haven't looked complacent at all. Maybe last night we we weren't our best against against Rochdale, but for for basically all of the season, I think we've been top of the league since um since the first first uh, match week. So. Yeah, it's it's crazy, really. I I can't see us not getting promoted, and you know, Forest Green Rovers in League One, it it, it doesn't sound right, but that's that's how good the team is. That's how good uh, the the squad is, and how brilliant Rob Edwards has been for Forest Green. That you know, we could be looking at uh, being in League One next season, which is an amazing achievement for a, for a club of of our size. Absolutely. Um, you you mentioned. The, the previous seasons have had a little blip around this time and stupidly this has been mentioned to us for, as if we would be interested in, in title winning on League 2 um, because we, we shouldn't be anywhere near it um, and yeah I think it's I think on Saturday you, you went down as well and you had to come back to equalise was it or was that last week sorry uh, against Port Vale last week came from behind to draw yes. and then obviously last night came from behind to win yeah yeah, so we were hoping you were going to start dropping some points and we could then start start clawing you back. It's ridiculous. Um, 
You're an idiot, boy. <laughs> So I haven't had any dinner yet, I'm feeling a bit shaky. Um, <laughs> so are you guys at the opening uh, the opening game of the season, our first ever game, me too. So we obviously didn't know what to expect. I, I wasn't there, Dan, Dan, you were there. Um, did you, were you a bit surprised that after seeing that game and how, how we had done, that Forest Green had gone on this completely insane, just smashing everyone outside? Yeah, I think uh, I think Sutton definitely deserved something that day. Like it, it, it was harsh. Obviously, it was it was a set piece in in stoppage time, wasn't it? Ibu Adams scoring, and and it was it was it was very harsh. Obviously, that's not put you down at all. You know, you haven't been disheartened by that because you've gone on to pick up a lot of really good results and find yourselves where you are. But yeah, I'd, you know, never envisaged Forest Green going the way they have since since that since that result. Um, but I also think. I think Edwards has mentioned it before that actually winning that game and getting that result has been really important in sort of just going on going on actually. Um, but no, I, I, I never to to be going going well. They weren't particularly impressive in that first game, and you know I can assure you that they've improved their a lot <laughs> since then. We don't want that kind of assurances. We want to know that you're being complacent and <laughs> you're not going to take us very seriously at all. Um, so you kind of already answered how, how the expectations of the season when you're going in. Did you think you, you should be pushing for promotion or did you kind of think it would tail off again? Well, I think last season the squad was more than capable of, of promotion. And uh, we saw at the end of the season with with Mark Cooper leaving and Jimmy Ball coming in, he sort of saved our our season, and you know we managed to to get in the playoffs and suffer that that heartbreak against Newport. So I think as Forest Green fans, we knew that the potential was there with the squad, but with a manager like Rob Edwards coming in, a man whose any previous experience at men's football was at Telford, you know you don't know how that how that's going to go, but it, it turned out to be an absolute masterstroke from, from Dale Vince Forest Green and I think it was four players were, were brought in added to that team from, from last year and they, they've really you know impacted the team in a positive way uh, Ben Stevenson and Regan Hendry in midfield were probably the you know the, the key men from, from, the, from the transfer window and yeah I think the expectation was there to definitely challenge for, for playoffs maybe 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 knocking on the door of the promote automatic spots was, was a bit too much of an ask but yeah, just like Laurie, I didn't expect us to sort of run away with it like we have. Uh, touch wood. Hopefully, we we do get promoted. I, but I just can't see us collapsing like we have in the past. Well, it sounds like your manager and our manager have got a lot in common with him. It's kind of a bit <laughs> of a risk and that no real pedigree behind them. In the nicest meaning, Um and. Just completely smashed it. So hopefully other clubs will start following suit and not just do that that merry-go-round that you keep seeing over and over with these, these um, managers. Um, so tell us a little bit, quick bit about your your podcast, the Pod on Top of the Hill. I got it right this time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, so we started it in what 2019 November. Um, and yeah, we're we're both obviously Forest Green fans, uh, doing the same uni course at University of Gloucestershire Sports Journalism. So uh, we were sort of on about it for a while, and then one day, I think just after we beat Cheltenham at Wadden Road to go top of the league in the nineteen twenty season, we thought, "Oh, why not? We'll just give it a go." And uh, it was fairly, you know, fairly well received. So we've sort of just been been going ever since then. So after that, but uh, but now you know we. Uh, you know, we, we 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 properly properly enjoy it. Um, sort of record an episode every every fortnight in in the studio in, in uni. So, so yeah, I've been going yeah over, over two years now. So uh, yeah, yeah pro- pro- properly enjoy it. Excellent. So proper studio, proper sports journalists. We're going to skip over all this because otherwise people will start wondering why they got this old crap. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we don't like professionals here. Um, Right, so let's talk about the game Saturday. Um, what do we reckon? Um, who wants to go first with a, 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 their thoughts on what's going to happen? Well, I'm really excited to, to be going to, to Sutton, you know, a, a new ground. Um, I personally 
I know you were very impressive in on the first game of the season, but I didn't expect you guys to to get up and, and be where you are now. So, or what to expect in terms of you know quality from you guys on the weekend because we we have played we have we have had quite quite a tough run. Uh, Tranmere, Newport, Port Vale as well. Port Vale were really good against us when we. So I, I'm, I'm anticipating a, a similar sort of performance from Sutton. They, you know, we we might struggle, but I think we we've just got that sort of confidence, not arrogance, but it's just something about us. You know, we're top of the league, we're Forest Green. I, I just think that even if we we do struggle at points in the game, we will have enough to at least come away with with, with a point. Yeah, I think um, I think the way I'm sort of looking at it is, you know, we've played Tranmere and Newport recently, as as Ollie just mentioned, mentioned there, which have been really tough games, and this one will be really tough as well. And I really hope Sutton go on to to get the top three because I think it'll just be an incredible story. Um, you know, <laughs> see, see you making a face there, not so sure, but you know, be an, be an incredible story. But the way I sort of look at look at this, there's 16 points separating Sutton and Forest Green at the moment. So whilst it's fourth fourth against first. It's fourth against 16-point gap first, you know, which is a hell of a difference. So I do think Forest Green will probably, you know, they're unbeaten nearly a whole year now. I think they're just less than two months away from making it making it a whole year unbeaten on the road, um, which would be an incredible feat. So no doubt it will be a tough game, but I do expect expect Rovers to, to come away with three points, I think. Okay. Dan, what's your thoughts on the game? Um, yeah, it's going to be a tough one. I mean, they've been in great form since the opening day. I mean, you could, whilst they didn't sort of pull up any trees on the opening day, you could tell that there was quality there. You know, the way that this, just the simple speed and the way they moved the ball. Um, and yeah, we were a little unlucky there on the open to, to not get a point, but it also showed that they're the sort of side who will keep going right to the final whistle, a, a bit like we do in many cases as well. Um, so, with the way they're going, and I'd, I'd, I'd take another point, to be honest. Just well, take us nicely to that 50 points we were talking about earlier. <laughs> Finally get to that point, and then we can start looking to the rest of the season. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm expecting a tough one, um, especially with, you know, we might be a bit light in midfield now as well with, with Eastie limping off on, on Tuesday. Yeah. So I think that might be the key. If we can either get Ali Smith back or Eastie just – is able to play, then that that that'll definitely be a big boost for us as well. Absolutely, um, Gabriel. Yeah, it's a tough one, of course. Uh, anything can happen, and uh, we're back to our uh, original position of being the underdogs, which we liked. Um, <laughs> I remember we we had an excellent game at Tranmere, and uh, I don't know, maybe we make a, we'll have a surprise here. Yeah. But yeah, there's this, that uh, being light in the midfield uh, thing that was mentioned. I think uh, Smith is a cr- crucial uh, player for for Sutton. And when we had the other bad spell with three games uh, without a victory, Bristol, uh, Newport, and uh, Bradford, I think he was missing at the first two. So yeah. I think we really need him back. Yeah, no, absolutely. The, the reason for the face pulling and the jokes is is Sutton have never ever 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 mentioned the football league in almost their 123 year history. I mean, we kind of got promoted and everyone's going, "What? Hey, hang on!" And yeah, it's it's been odd, but the the difference between the national league and, and league two is is not what we thought it would be, um, and we are very surprised to be at that. Not necessarily at that end of the table, but uh, certainly people talking about it. It's, it's, it's just a very strange experience for us. Um, Dan, you'd be pleased to know I'm not going to do the predictions because I have been awful at it. So I couldn't, I, I couldn't turn the figures into any way to make it me look good in any way, shape, or form. So I'm stopping that. <laughs> finally, finally given up. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I was, I was working out all these convoluted systems to make out that I was good, but uh, none of them worked. So. Unlucky, mate. <laughs> at least you tried. Exactly. At least you tried. Yeah, before we finish up, we'd just like to say from everyone at Sutton United, I think, um, special condolences to the family of young Nate at Tranmere. 
um, sending us all, all our love and support to you guys in this really, really difficult time. Thank you to all my guests. We've got Gabrielle, who's been supporting something for just over a year or so now. Uh, we've got Dan from Gandamodium and Ollie and Laurie from the pod on top of the hill, a couple of Forest Green Rovers fans. Drop me your comments um, at Sutton Podcast on any of the socials or even email, which is mike at suttonpodcast.com because I've now spent money on a domain name. I draw the line at spending money on a website, so the website's like really basic, but it's there. Um, thank you all for your time and thank you for listening. See you soon. Bye bye. Thank you. See you guys. Bye. Cheers. United! 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 United!